Also with us this evening, writer Michael Nugent, chairperson of the advocacy group Atheist Ireland, which was formed to promote atheism, reason and ethical secularism in Ireland and around the world. Michael's writing ranges from satire to serious and includes the hit comedy musical play Aikino, written with his insight as an ardent football fan. You're all very welcome. Michael Eugen, can I start with you? Can we be good without God? Well, of course we can. We can also be bad without God and we can be good with God and bad with God uh, in terms of ideas in our minds. I think morality uh, has evolved in the brains of social animals, including human and non-human animals, because cooperation and competition are both useful for the survival of the species. And so we see in both human and non-human animals uh, attributes such as um, at the base level, compassion and empathy, and then moving towards cooperation and reciprocity. And then as upper level primates and humans evolve the ability to rationally think things through, we see ideas such as fairness and justice coming into play. So that's how morality evolved. But what we have with religion is an extra layer that corrupts that natural morality. So you have people believing that the creator of the universe is telling them to trump that natural morality by with commands that have nothing to do with empathy or compassion or reciprocity or cooperation or fairness or justice. So you get books telling us, to, such as the Christian Bible, saying to stone a man to death for gathering sticks on the Sabbath. And you have the, the, um, the, the Quran. Uh, saying to flog adulterers and uh, and don't let your compassion stop you from doing so. And and so those things, we intuitively know that they're wrong. So religious people today tend to go, well, well, OK, those things are wrong, but but there's a lot of good stuff as well. But the key thing in, in that is that by by making that distinction, you're applying your own morality to those religious commands. You're not getting your morality from them. But the dilemma I have in, in listening to your explanation is that as an atheist, you're actually commenting on your fellow humans who are making these conclusions, not a deity or a god. Exactly, yeah. The, the gods only exist in our minds. It, it's, it's humans, and not only humans. I, I personally, as, as, as a vegan, I extend my empathy and compassion to non-human animals. Mm. Like, I, I would operate on the basis of an extension of, of, of uh, John Rawls' social contract theory, which is, is, is that you should try to figure out what would, you know, in theory, you can't do this in reality, what would a perfectly rational set of people come up with as ways to, to govern society if they didn't know where within that society they would be? They didn't know whether to be male or female, rich or poor, healthy or, um, or ill. And I would add to that, we shouldn't know what species we'd be. And then we'd come up with a very different uh, moral uh, set of values. It's also interesting, and I'd open this to all three of you, but the idea too that where on the one hand, if we're looking at religious versus secular, religion provides for many people the concept of forgiveness. We can apparently, if we are in a position to confess and to make amends to our God, be absolved of our sins. Michael Newton, we don't get that in the same way in the secular world, do we? Well, you, do. you just don't attribute it to a, a supernatural being. You know, I mean, I've forgiven a lot of people for the things that they've done. People have forgiven me for things that I've done. It doesn't, it doesn't require any uh, supernatural being. And, and the, the, see, I, th I think a lot of religious people seem to, to believe that their framework is the only way to, or certainly the primary way to look at it and, and everybody else has to, has to justify how they can do these things. But actually, secularism and atheism and humanism have all been found, for example, by the European Court of Human Rights to be philosophical convictions um, that are worthy of respect in a democratic society and that, and, and that are, have the same protections um, as, as religious beliefs. So it's it's not a case that you've religion on one hand and everybody else has to explain how they come up with with uh, morality. It's it's we're all moral beings, to whatever degree we are concerned about maximising the well-being of sentient beings and minimising the suffering of sentient beings. Now, where we believe that comes from is a separate issue, but it's not the default that it comes from religion and everybody else has to justify where they get it from. There's a, an experiment that's run, I think it was back in 1972, by uh, Professor Walter Michel in Stanford University, referred to as the marshmallow test. And they leave children alone in a room with a hidden camera and they leave some treats or marshmallow. And they say to them, if you don't eat one of those while I'm out of the room, I'll give you a second one. 
But what the really interesting part of the experiment is, in many cases, the number of children who will go ahead and eat it when they think nobody is watching and that nobody's looking. That's what I want to explore a little bit further. I mean, if you think about heading down a motorway in Ireland, speed limit 120 kilometres, would anybody go maybe 10% a little bit over because you might get away with it? Michael, what's, what's governing our, uh, our attitudes to ideas like that? Well... First of all, I think we all have our innate sense of morality. Each individual has, has a sense of morality as, as, as to what they will do if they are or aren't being watched. Uh, the additional part is is, is consequences, uh, you know, and, and I, I, I think it, it, what seems to be the case, and certainly in terms of, say, criminal behaviour, is that... Uh, criminals are are less deterred by major consequences and more by the thought of getting caught so that's that's the so there's an element of risk thing. analysis that, that people are doing yeah yeah, yeah. but but it, but i think it brings it that brings us on to sort of a, a wider thing which again touches on, on the religious things is, is is how do we convince people more or less on on average to be more caring and and, and more empathetic and compassionate than they would be if they, if they were just looking out for themselves. And the easy answer that religion has used over the years, and not just religion, you know, secular societies have used as well, is is uh, authoritarianism. And um, particularly through religion, because there's an extra psychological impact in religious authoritarianism, which is you're telling people that the, the this is the word of the creator of the universe. And if you get somebody to believe that, that's a very strong motivator, even though it may not be accurate. Now, I, w- I would prefer that we work towards a world where, peop- where we encourage people and enable people to, to work out what is the best thing to do in a given situation uh, based, based on its impact on other sentient beings rather than based on its consequences for itself. Now, it's obviously harder to do that without authoritarianism, but it's, I think it's more valuable if you can do it without authoritarianism. But very often, some people may remember a little green catechism book that gave us Ten Commandments, and that was our starting off point from a religious perspective as to what was right or wrong. Yeah, and they're shocking commandments. Really, they're terrible. They're, 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 the first few are about... Are about appeasing the creator of the universe uh, and and the others are largely about protecting the interests of the adult males of one tribe in one part of the world you know they they, they treat uh, women as property um you know they they, they talk about uh, not being unjust to your neighbor but but your neighbor was essentially the members of the tribe you know you were uh, uh, encouraged this this god and encouraged people to slaughter members of other tribes without mercy. So, so you, you have a, a set of commandments that, that superficially include uh, a, a lot of, of, of good commands, but actually didn't, didn't evolve for that purpose. They evolved to control one tribe at one time. And, 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 and in a situation where, where, according to the story, that what the God was, was saying to that tribe is, if you obey my rules, I will help you to kill those people and take their land. 